When it comes to competition, Auburn University has seen its share of success. The football team has two national championships and 16 SEC titles. The baseball team has appeared in the College World Series five times, and three years ago, the basketball team made it to the NCAA Final Four. While hoping to expand on that legacy, the Tigers assembled a new team this year. Now, you might not think of it as a sport, but this team competes in livestock judging. To you and me, all of these animals might look the same, but a livestock judge can rank them from best to worst, and most importantly, tell you why they reach those conclusions. Mark, it's livestock, you want them muscular. You know, you want them sound, on the go, and muscular. Uh, breeding livestock, you want them uh, bold ribbed, soft centered, because that's they've got to carry their offspring, but you want them really, really sound, because they've got to have Longevity. You might think livestock judging is just for country boys who can't make it on a sports team. But being a part of this team is about a lot more than winning a blue ribbon or a shiny new belt buckle. We're teaching the basics of where food animal production comes from for all kids that are involved. Uh, another reason, so kids are learning how to identify high quality livestock and breeding programs, whether it be market or breeding divisions, as well it just shapes kids into the ones that we uh, want to see and be respectable people when they're getting into the industry and workforce. During competition, experts on a particular species of animal rank them in order of best to worst on a number of criteria. Not only do teams have to rank the animals in the proper order, they have to be able to provide the reasons for that rank. Most everyone can see the livestock the way they are and evaluate those pretty close to how the officials do. But then you get in that reasons room and you're defending why you placed him the way you did. And it, it can be difficult because you know you have the judge and one, one official may just stare you down. The next may play on their phone during the thing and you may get a high score from both. But you're thinking, are they actually paying attention to what I'm saying? Even if a student has no plans to work in agriculture, livestock judging teaches skills that are useful in any career. There's big industry companies that specifically target students that go through livestock competitions and meat judging competitions and wool judging competitions um, because they know that they're effective in their decision making and they're effective in explaining their reasoning and process and they become natural leaders within the industry and in small groups uh, within those companies. Auburn had a livestock judging team up until about 25 years ago. Since the team was re-established earlier this year, it's traveled all across the country to participate in competitions and has done quite well. We've had uh, multiple top 10 honors so far with a few uh, specific divisions getting in the top five as well. We were third in horses at Fort Worth, fifth in the Brahma division at Dixie National, and then quite a few top 10 honors as well. This is the future of agriculture, and it develops, uh, it develops leadership skills, it develops communication skills, and it develops decision-making skills, and being able to stick with that decision once you make it. Jeff Helms is Director of Communications for the Alabama Farmers Federation. Jeff was also a member of Auburn University's livestock team several years ago, back before it was discontinued. But Jeff, being a part of the livestock uh, judging team, how did that affect your college experience? Well, Kevin, it was, um, it was great because I made some lifelong friendships through livestock judging. In fact, people that I still work with today in the agricultural industry are some of the friends that I made in livestock judging. And then the other thing that I would say is just like anything else that you're involved in in college, it helps you with time management. You know, being part of a judging team where you're practicing a lot, you're taking trips out of state to compete, you have to be a better manager of your time. And, and it, I think that actually helped make me a better student because I had to juggle those things. And now in your career, how has that experience helped you? Well, you know, one of the things about judging, whether it's livestock judging or land judging or forestry judging, you have to be able to make a decision and then back that decision up in, in livestock judging, certainly with, with a set of reasons. So I think it really helped in that regard. It also exposed us as, as judging uh, teammates to a lot of, of working with a lot of adults because a lot of times you're, uh, the folks evaluating you are adults and so it helped us develop those relationships and again uh, that network of, of my judging team members it's still a big part of my life. We have 
uh, members of our team that are heavily involved in Alabama Cattlemen's Association, uh, Alabama Cooperative Extension System, or at least a retiree. He went on to become a livestock judging uh, coach for 4-H'ers and has trained some, some young people that are now in college experiencing the same thing that we did. Um, uh, another one of our uh, judging team members has a successful beef cattle operations, uh, has been involved in, in, in other work in, in the industry. So it's, uh, it's just a, a real valuable uh, experience from a networking standpoint. Now I know that you grew up on a farm. Somebody who didn't grow up on a farm may not know that much about agriculture, but for somebody who's interested in something like this, what are your recommendations for them? Well, first of all, you don't have to be a cowboy to be on the livestock judging team. I was the non-cowboy of our judging team. In fact, I did not grow up uh, showing cattle or any of those kinds of things. I grew up on a fruit and vegetable farm. Um, so uh, don't let that intimidate you, number one. And then secondly, I would say get involved with uh, the 4-H club or FFA in your area. A lot of times they will offer judging programs and that's a great way to start. And, and coming up next year, hopefully, we will have an Alabama Cooperative Extension System livestock specialist specifically working with kids that are interested in showing cattle or in judging. And that was supported by the Alabama Farmers Federation in this last legislative session. It was a bill uh, championed by, uh, or part of the budget, championed by Nathaniel Ledbetter from Rainsville. So they've set aside money in the budget just for somebody to work with 4-H kids on these kinds of things. All right, great. Jeff Elms with the Alabama Farmers Federation. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. When Simply Southern continues, we'll join Stacy Little in the kitchen. He'll show us a recipe he developed by just putting stuff in a skillet and seeing what happened. The result is a delicious dish that's perfect for a quick and easy meal any night of the week. What we eat, what we wear, it all starts somewhere. And if it's good, it usually starts with a farmer. And that somewhere is right here in Alabama. In a field, in a barn, on a tractor. Right now, there's a farmer starting something good for all of us. And it all starts right here in Alabama. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you. With a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application, you'll always find what you need. Plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. For more Simply Southern, follow us on social media. And while you're online, visit our website, simplysoutherntv.net. Simply Southern continues in a moment. Sweet Corn Alabama, we just saw it as such an amazing platform to be able to market for farmers and small Alabama businesses. Being a niche producer, a commercial mushroom laboratory, um, it's very important that we kind of get the word out about who we are and Sweet Grown has been monumental in helping us do that. I think just support your local community, your neighbor. That's the backbone. Discover what's growing in your neck of the woods at SweetGrownAlabama.org. 